This is Steve Robbins. Welcome to the Get It Done Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Work Less and Do More. If you're like me, you live on your phone. Also, if you're like me, you're five foot ten, ravishingly sexy, brilliant beyond belief, and yet compellingly modest. You have apps for this and apps for that. Indeed, you may be listening to this very podcast or reading the transcript on your phone at this very moment. But have you ever stopped to consider how much your smartphone drags down your productivity? We all know about notifications. It's time for an appointment. Ping! Someone posted a must-read article about hairless albino mole rats. Ping! New email. Ping! Someone wants a schmoopy for an hour. Ping! Incoming call. Ping! Ping! Ping, 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 ping. Oh, in episode 445, we covered how to de-addictify your technology, and turning off notifications is, of course, one way to do it. But... Your smartphone drags down your brain. Smartphones suck. They slow you down. The interface is inefficient and unusable. You have to take your mind off of whatever you're thinking about and use genuine thought just to make sure you're typing the right characters. One minute, you're planning how to raise your zombie army, and the next minute, you're trying to deal with the social ramifications of not noticing that autocorrect turned your text message saying, I missed you, into one saying, I kissed you. Text messages are admissible evidence in court. But even worse, for me, is that even just starting an app is hard. You can imagine that a productivity geek has a bunch of apps. I have 288, according to my About screen, and of that 288, probably only 20 gets used regularly. But which 20? When you scroll through your screens and screens and screens of icons, it seems that any given app is a must-keep. Even that game you downloaded six years ago, which has that animated character who reminds you of your childhood puppy Spot? You can't delete that app. That would be like, that would be like deleting Spot. Speaking of which, I really want to launch the Spot Your Future Nemesis app so that I can get a head start on the competition. Now, which screen is that on again? You won't have to worry which screen if you could magically have what you need at your fingertips. And in just a few days, you can put everything you need at your fingertips. Literally. Each time you use an app, drag its icon to your home screen of icons in the upper left position. The rest of the icons will shift over and down to make room, and the one at the end of the page will move over to the next page. The apps you use most frequently will stay towards the top and top left of the screen, and soon you'll know your most frequently used icons because they'll keep getting moved there. But even better, soon they'll all be clustered on the front page. No more swiping to other pages. Yay! Now, once you've done this for about a week, you'll have identified your top apps, and you can stop doing it. You'll know right where your most used apps are on the front screen, and you'll get used to where they are by position. Once you have your most common apps on the front screen, look through your other screens, and if you want to, group your remaining apps into folders named so that you can find them quickly. So, for example, photo apps, messaging apps, music apps, stuff like that. Then, when you need a less frequently used app, you can find the relevant folder and drag out the app that you need. And again, you're going to drag it out, and if you're still in the process of finding out which ones are the most common ones, you'll drag it all the way to the front screen and let it migrate its way back to where it belongs. Keep each folder small, one screen of icons at the most, because otherwise, finding an icon will mean scrolling to the right screen, opening the folder, then scrolling through the folder before you ever get to the icon you actually need. And by that time, whatever you were thinking about and the task that you were trying to do and the thing that was important will be thoroughly interrupted. You can, of course, create folders on your home screen. In the event that you use so many apps so frequently that the front page can't hold them all, do consider creating a folder on the front screen. Now, that means that you'll have to open the folder to launch any of those apps, but it might be worth it. Do this by grouping related apps together. If you regularly use both Zombie Locator 1.0 and Zinder, the app for meeting local zombies for in-person board games, you may create a front screen folder called Zombie Recruiting and put both apps in it. That buys you one more available slot in that all-important front screen. Do this again when you find yourself swiping a lot, because over time your needs do change. Some apps become more important, some less. Sure, Zender might deserve to stay in the top left spot of your home screen, but perhaps Maps had fallen to your second screen, since you rarely use it when you're at home. But when you go traveling and you use it a lot, suddenly you're swiping over to the second screen over and over and over and over to get to it. When you're swiping past the home screen more than a couple times a day, restart the migration procedure, and very quickly your apps will settle on the new set that you use most often. This will go much faster the second time because already most of the icons will be in the places where they belong. 
Rather than trying to organize all the icons on your smartphone the way you think you'll use them, organize them how you really do use them. Every time you use an app, move it to the upper left corner of screen one, and over time, your most commonly used apps will be at your beck and call. You want to use Spot Your Future Nemesis app immediately followed by the Zombie Army Targeting app? They'll both be right there on your home screen. Easy to tap. And by the way, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If they do, show them the Zombie Army Targeting app and give them a chance to change their opinion. I'm Steve Robbins. Follow Get It Done Guy on Twitter and Facebook. If you have projects that are stalled or taking too long, check out my Get It Done Group's accountability groups. You can learn more at steverrobbins.com or join my personal mailing list by texting Get It Done to 33444, and you'll also get a free copy of my secret book chapter on how to build relationships that help you succeed. Work less, do more, and have a great life. <laughs>